Lord, give me strength tonight. Hey, this is Dan from Music Explorer. We're here today with Greg Smith. He's the bassist for Ted Nugent's band. He's been with Ted since 2007. Greg's got a lot of rock and roll stories, so we're going to get into it. Why don't you tell us how you got started in the uh, music business? I was a child of the early 70s, coming of age and listening to rock and roll and listening to AM radio back then. And my sister was really, really big into music, as was I. And uh, her birthday's in April and mine's in May. So in April, she got a guitar for her birthday. And she said, hey, let's start a band. You can play bass. And I went, okay. So my birthday's in May. I got a bass the next month for my birthday. And I remember getting it and going, why has it only got four strings? Within three months, I was playing in a band. And within four months, I was doing my first gig. So you started out with um, uh, Wendy O. Williams, right, in 1985? It was uh, touring for the WOW album, where she did her first solo album. How I ended up getting that gig, uh, I was playing with a band called Squadron. Uh, out of Queens, New York, in, uh, in Long Island. And Eric Carr used to come see us all the time. You know, he really liked the band. And so one day um, he brought Gene, and this was at the time when they were uh, Creatures of the Night album. You know, they were having trouble with Ace or whatever went down with that. Um, and they were looking for a guitar player. And they really liked Michael, Michael Ray, our guitar player. So uh, they brought him in to do some recording. But then Gene was producing Wendy O's first solo effort. And um, he ended up playing bass on it under the name Reginald Van Helsing and uh, put Michael in the band. And then when it came time to put the touring band together, he put me in the band. And then uh, I remember while living in Switzerland, um, seeing the Alice Cooper videos because Trash was big at the time. And my buddy Al Petrelli, you know, was, was in the uh, videos. And I was like, oh man, I would love that gig. So then fast forward a year later, um, I'm playing at the NAMM show with Joe Franco and Vinnie Moore. And uh, Alice Cooper's A&R guy and his personal assistant walked in the premiere booth where we were playing. And he liked, they liked me and Vinnie. And they basically just put us both in Alice Cooper's band. You were also with uh, Rainbow in 1995 too, right? In 94, 95, I was in both bands. And so it wasn't until about in 96 where they became a rub and I had to make a choice, you know, uh, Alice or Rainbow. So I ended up leaving Alice's band. And um, the reason for that was with both bands, I was a side man, right? But Rainbow put itself out there as a band. So all the promo pics were, you know, all the band members and, you know, um, I did interviews and, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So I thought for me as a, as a side man and as an individual player, it was better for my career to do that. Did you know Richie before him? No, actually, uh, John O'Reilly, who was the drummer, he and I played on a lot of Joe Lynn Lin Turner albums together and did a lot of live gigs with Joe Lynn Turner. And John got the gig. After he got it, they needed a bass player and he recommended me. I was playing at a club out in Long Island. There was a big window on the side. The stage was like right here, right? And then there's a window, a purple Mercedes pulls up and I could tell it's Richie and he's looking out the window and he's listening, you know? And I guess he was listening to see if he liked what he heard. And once he decided he liked what he heard, he parked and then came in. Back then I was brewing beer with a good friend of mine, Charlie. I had some with me that night. And I was like, hey Richie, uh, I've got some homemade beer here that I made. Uh, would you like to try some? And he turned around and he goes, you make beer? And I went, yeah. And he goes, I would love to try some. <laughs> and then, you know, that just kind of really broke that. It was just one more little different thing, I guess he liked about me too. And then. Uh, invited me up to jam with the band up at some big mansion that they rented in the Hudson Valley. At the end of the night, he goes, right, if you want the job, you've got it. And then he walked out. You know, then they called me back again. And it, so it was like, you know, three or four times. And I still didn't know if I was in the band. So then management calls me and they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we heard that you, you don't really know if you're in the band. I'm like, no, nobody really mentioned anything. They're like, yeah, you're in the band. <laughs> okay. I don't know, he, Richie's a practical joker. He likes to do things like that. He's the kind of guy that like, uh, He'll get you drunk at the bar, and this is back in the, in the days where hotel rooms actually had keys. Then he'd put crazy glue in your keyhole and, and you know, st stand down the hallway and watch you try and get your key in there. And, you know, by the time I played with Richie, I'd already played with Jolyn Turner and Chuck Berge and David Rosenthal. So I heard all the stories. I was ready for it. So I, I never let him get a rise out of me. That's the thing. If, if he sees that, what he's doing is affecting you in some way, shape, or form, he's gonna keep doing it. If he doesn't doesn't get a rise out of you, he's just gonna move on to easier prey. One time uh, when Richie left the guitar on the stage on the monitor feeding back, this was in London at the Hammersmith Odeon, somebody nicked the guitar. 
Doogie is the best I've ever met at like just making up songs on the spot about whatever situation's going on. It was this, I think it was a B flat drone going on because Richie had like a, a, a Roland like synth thing attached to his guitar. And when you unplug it, it does this, you know what I mean? Doogie being Scottish is used to a B flat drone because that's what a, a bagpipe is. He just started singing, somebody nick Richie's guitar, please return it, you know, and sure enough, the guy came down the aisle, you know, with the guitar over his head, and everybody's applauding for the guy. Meanwhile, he should be getting his ass kicked, you know? But Richie got his guitar back, and it was one of his, uh, you know, early 70s strats that he used in purple, so it's an iconic instrument. So then you were kind of busy there, because you had Alice, you had Rainbow, and you had you and Dolores to call at the same time. That's a lot of work. Yeah, 95 was a busy year, yeah. yeah. <laughs>